the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. And today, I am lucky enough to be with Neferi Morris. Neferi, welcome to the Florida Writer Podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. This is great. Could you give us a 60-second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Hmm. Okay. So um, my name is Neferi. Um, I am born and raised, well, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I am now here in Winter Haven, Florida. Um, I started my writing career um, in journalism. Um, well, I should, I did start my writing career in, career in journalism, but I have always loved writing. I've been writing, writing fiction stories ever since I was probably about six years old. Um, but I started writing professionally in journalism, um, and I always enjoyed the collaborative effort of, you know, you know, letting people know what's going on in the world and even not even in the world all the time, but even in their community, I always kind of, I kind of grew towards that in my, um, later in my career, just, um, my interest in community journalism um, and collaborating with, you know, at whichever newsroom I was in to kind of make that better. So um, I left journalism um, in, oh gosh, 2019. And I, you know, do full-time work as uh, in public relations, but I also do freelance writing. I've written for the Washington Post. I've written for Shondaland. I've um, written for many other publications. Um, in, in topics varying from tennis to um, technology. So I my interests range. Um, I also write fiction still. And I actually just found out that some of my fiction work is going to be published in a magazine this fall. And I don't think I can say which one yet, but I'm pretty jacked about that. That's the first time my fiction will ever see the light of day. So <laughs> <laughs> that is a super exciting turn of events. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, relatively recent. It's uh, scary because I that is something I've never put out there before. So, but it's exciting. Yeah. All right. So you're used to being a journalist, being published, having your name with the byline. All that stuff is really good and exciting. But now, all of a sudden, fiction work is coming out. What's the difference? Ah, oh, that's that's really interesting. I think for me, the difference is just that the creative work. And for better or for worse, I have always been very protective and in, I guess insecure about it just because it's, I, I think in journalism, you are writing something about something that happened. And so even if someone doesn't like the way you wrote about it, and I was a columnist too. So, I mean, I had some editorial freedom there too, but it, you can disagree with an opinion. And that's one thing because the way I wrote columns anyway, I always, had you know what I thought was good supporting evidence I never said hey the, the the earth is flat so that's it you know I always had you know supporting evidence not that I would argue that by the way um, but I think the difference is just that you have that security of you know usually writing about an event and in fiction you're just making it up and you know somebody you know can be kind of crushing if someone doesn't like it, it, it you know you're kind of just out there on your own a little bit so I think that was probably what took me so long to even start pitching out my fiction that only happened a couple of years ago where I got comfortable enough to just you know put it out there and just you know, be a little brave. And if I, you know, I mean, there will be rejections. There are always rejections in journalism. There are rejections in this, in this line. So it's just, you gotta, you know, pick up your shoulders and just lean into it either way. So take me back to the beginning. You're in high school, you decide you want to major in journalism in college. I'm assuming that that was your path. And, and did you, I'm not a journalist, so walk me through what it's like to be a journalist. Okay. Um, yes, I will tell you, I was in high school when I chose journalism. And the reason I chose it, um, <laughs> I was doing a social studies project where I was registering voters in downtown Brooklyn, where I grew up. 
And I was kind of touched by the experience. A lot of the people who I spoke with had no idea how to register to vote. And that just really stuck with me. And so I wrote an op-ed column about it for our school newspaper. And it was, it, it did not, I didn't expect the impact that it got. It was, and it wasn't, and not to say that it was earth shattering, you know, that people were like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. But it, it started a dialogue. And I thought that was so cool that people just walked up to me and they would say, yeah, I saw that article. That is so interesting. Or, wow, I really disagree with you. My mom really disagreed with that article. She was, <laughs> she was very unhappy with it <laughs> because I think at the time she was not, she was not a full citizen of the state. So she was just like kind of sensitive about it. I'm going to say that's why. Um, but it started a dialogue. And the other thing that happened was my byline was right there in print. And I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> so that kind of hooked me in. And um, so I've held a lot of positions in newsrooms. So it's kind of hard to answer what it's like to, because there's so many different experiences to be had in a newsroom. Um, my gosh, I, I, I really enjoyed being an editor, but I love writing as well. Um, I will, I guess I can tell you what my experience was like quickly as a columnist and then as an editor. So as a columnist, I was a columnist at the Pittsburgh Tribune Review for five years. And, um, and I um, would, I, I was given a lot of freedom to write about whatever I wanted to write. So I would just, it was really fun. I would just go out into Pittsburgh. Um, I usually had an idea of where I wanted to go. So I would just go I'll give you an example of probably my favorite um story that I did um I was driving around in Pittsburgh trying to familiarize myself and there was a, a um a plaque in this black neighborhood about it it said something about um an African American museum and I already knew that there was a huge African American arts museum in downtown Pittsburgh. And this was not, this was just a, one of the suburbs. So I um, just kind of went out there and started asking around and walking around and talking to people until I found the property owner. And I asked her, what is this plaque about? What is the deal? Because we already have a museum. And she, she would not talk to me. She spent three hours telling me she wouldn't talk to me. <laughs> so I thought I'd probably have a chance here of getting her to talk to me. So we, we talked um, a few weeks later. And I ended up writing this really well-received column and educational because there were a lot of people in Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is very... Um, they just love their history. So people read that and they're like, oh, this is a story I have never heard. This is great. And so it was really just for me, a, probably the best example of just kind of like stumbling on something and, and pulling a string and having that freedom to pull it. Um, and then as an editor, I was, my, my last newsroom job was um, as the assistant Metro editor at the Ledger in Lakeland. And um, that was, Probably, I mean, at this point, newspapers are struggling and staff, there was, there was a smaller staff, but the staff was so, so tenacious. And I loved like helping them develop it, develop those stories that came up when they pulled strings, when they were just pulling their shoes. Like, I got a feeling about this. I'm like, okay, well, have you tried talking to the city? Have you just gotten around? I, you know, I think one thing I loved about that newsroom was. It, because it wasn't like a few others that I've been in where some people just sit at their desk and get on the phone. Um, it wasn't very, I didn't always have to encourage them to say, hey, get out there and go find your story, go find your people. And, you know, as you know, Polk County is huge and it's a challenge for, for to get everywhere in Polk County, but they were willing to go because they did get that payoff of a great story. So, um, yeah, that was, I, I hope that helped. It, but yeah, I have, have many hats and I love collaboration, the collaboration that happens in a newsroom, so. How do you develop questions 
So you meet this woman who refuses to talk to you mm -hmm. for three hours. Obviously, she's talking to you. <laughs> for yeah. But how do you how do you hone and and work on the craft of asking the right questions to get to the answers that you're looking for? Well, the way I used to do it, I would always start with a standard list of getting people comfortable about talking about themselves, because that's the easiest topic for most people is to talk about themselves. So you know a lot about yourself. Um, and, you know, once they feel comfortable just talking, you know, just about anything, then you can kind of, you know, start talking about what they know you're there to talk about anyway. So, you know, I think there's a fine line between, you know, carrying that intro part out too long because then they're like, you know, if you carry it out for too long, people kind of forget it's an interview and then there's like, hey, we're buddies. <laughs> it's like, wait, we've got to, we've got work to do here. So um, one thing I, I like to start with a list of questions, but you also want to keep space for things that will come up as you talk because, you know, it's going to be fluid and you think you know what you want to talk about you know what you're there to, to hear about but you also want to um just keep your ears open and and make space for things that you didn't expect to hear and 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 think hey i i do want to know some more about that hold on can you can we go back for a second um so what i always did was i had my written list and sometimes someone would say something in the course of answering that question that was like truly fascinating and i just like jot that down on the side of the you know kind of the, in the margin and then when we were through i would with with that depending on the urgency i felt in hearing the answer if it was a natural follow-up that's one thing but sometimes they would just say something that you knew okay i need more depth on this so you can go through your questions and then add it in but um that's how i would always do it to make sure that i got everything in that i needed to get in and then make space for you know hearing you know i always and i whenever possible i always like to um do audio of our interview so that i can go back and listen because that's another good opportunity when you're going back transcribing and pulling out those pieces that you like, you may still even in that process find something that you didn't ask and you're like, wow, I, I really should have asked that question. Let me go back and, and, and touch base with them. So there are a few different ways to try and, you know, make sure to, to, to be a, to make sure you catch everything and, and make the best story possible that, that is all encompassing. You are going to be presenting at the upcoming Florida writer con yeah. on pitching to newspapers so freelancing yes. pitches to newspapers tell me a little bit about uh what it's like to pitch to a newspaper like how do you get selected how do you how can freelance writers take advantage of it yes so i that was part of my reality as a as an editor um was working a lot with freelancers i got pitched frequently um and one one thing I always looked for was a clean introduction, meaning you are writing me a pitch that is, you know, that demonstrates your ability to write. Um, if you are writing, you know, if it has emojis in it, just reconsider, <laughs> please reconsider. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> it's true. Um, but. I always look for a clean introduction, look for your experience in the topic that you're looking to write about um, and, and a willingness to be flexible. You know, I think one thing, the, the reason I think that this is really a good topic to think about now is because of the reality of newsrooms. And they are not as fully staffed as they were, but they still need good content. And if you are in the community and you know about the topic that you're writing about, if you can demonstrate that right away, you know, it's going to be hard for someone in my editor's chair if I'm, you know, sitting there thinking, man, my lifestyle section really could use a section on movie reviews. And, you know, and, and you write me and you're like, Sometimes I think some people tend to be a little worried that their writing is a little 
scary or, 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 or I shouldn't say scary. I think they're, they're worried that their writing style might be a little too much. Like they are worried about being super formal. And, you know, as editors, we will take care of any, you know, you know, fluidity issues or anything like that, but don't be afraid to show your personality. That's my point. If you think that you're a little quirky, that's okay. You can show your quirkiness. And, you know, because that also speaks to what you'll be writing. You're, you know, that will also tell me what I can expect from you. And that's not bad. I mean, I don't think any newspaper editor is sitting here saying, I just want the driest copy that I can put into 14 inches. <laughs> it's like, no, they want personality. Bring your personality, bring your expertise and show your ability to write. And you're already halfway in the door. The other piece is with the fluidity of the newsroom is making sure that you're pitching to the right people, which can be hard because there's always that turnaround. Um, I know that, you know, just in that, in my position in newsrooms, when people send pitches to say general emails, it's like news tips at the ledger.com. Um, you know, that can get lost because there are a lot of hands in there and some, and it also gets really full of things like spam, you know, things that people, you know, are not tips that are not vetted that we could not pursue or would not pursue, you know, so you do your best to find a direct person. Um, you can call the newsroom. I mean, in my position in public relations now, I find myself doing that because it's so fluid, you know, who am I sending this pitch to? You know, it's okay to call. I use Twitter a lot. I love to 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 um get on, you know, just search for the um for the publication. And then you can find the people from you know that search. You can find the publication, you can find the people who follow it. And sometimes those are the people who work there. Journalists really love camping out at Twitter. And so that's a really great resource for trying to make sure that you're pitching to the right person too. The Ferry Morris, how can people get in touch with you? Well, they can find me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my um, my my um, name on Twitter is um, at just Neferi, J U S T N A F A R I, and then um, you can find my work in my portfolio at www.bynefari.com. Awesome. Are you ready to switch to our rapid fire questions? Woo! Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> what sport do you like to watch on TV most? Oh my gosh. Tennis by a long shot. It's the U S open is happening right now. I'm so sleep deprived because I've been staying up until two in the morning watching these matches. So Wimbledon <laughs> and uh, the French Open are really challenging. Is that right? Or I guess they're in the, are they in the morning? They, well, yes, the, the Wimbledon and the, and um, Australia, Wimbledon and the French Open are all in different time zones. So that can, that has, you really need to be a fan to stay up with that and just keep up with it. Um, and the U S open is this time zone, but it's still wild. It's still yeah, like, you know, I, if we had more days, time, I'd ask you about Serena and her retirement and her, her and accomplishments, but we, we're going to be out of time for that one. So how about this? What makes you smile? My kids. And I love, I also love playing tennis. That always makes me smile whenever I'm feeling bad or out of sorts. I think to myself, when was the last time I played tennis? And then I go to a court and I'm like, wow, this was great. So I'm sorry, my answers are very tennis heavy right now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> also I love sitting with a good book and reading uninterrupted. That's another thing that makes me smile. Yes. Oh, those moments you get to sit outside when the sun no. is just, just like right Perfect. there at the horizon and it's not too hot and it's not too humid. Those yeah. are to me, those are, those are some of my best times. I will Same. gladly take a lunch break with a book. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And final question. Do you have any bumper stickers on your car? No, I don't. I'm afraid. To, I, I'm always afraid. I'm the type of person who thinks that would be a cool one to get, but I, how would I get it off? So I'm very, I, I just, I talk myself out of it before I, um, before I do it. I did at some point. With my first car, I did have one for my college that I graduated from, which was Hampton University. But yeah, now I'm too scared. 
It's a weird thing to be scared of. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my. Well, Neferi Morris, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to the conference and it was awesome talking with you, Allison. You have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast with your host, Allison Nissen. Allison out. Woo. We're all done. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> I love that. You did a great job. Was, you're a great interviewer. I love that. Thank you. Neferi Morris is a former journalist of 17 years and now a freelance writer and public relations specialist. She started her journalism career at the Hartford Current as a copy editing intern, then joined the copy desk of the Wilmington Star News. She was the assistant metro editor for the Ledger in Lakeland before leaving the journalism industry. Nefari's freelance work has led her to work being published in the Washington Post, Adweek, Tennis Magazine, Shondaland.com, Leaps Magazine, Bellow Collective, Belt Magazine, Zorro Magazine, and other publications. She lives in Central Florida with her children, dogs, and tennis rackets. Join the Florida Writers Association for a weekend jam-packed with networking opportunities, workshops, awards, book signings, a youth summit, and more. Friday, October 28th to Sunday, October 30th. The Florida Writers Youth Summit, October 29th. For more information, visit floridawriters.org. Until next time.